So first we have Sebastian, um, who is a co-founder of Impact Academy and coaches impact-driven people. He's done a lot of different things in his life, including he's trained as an MD, co-authored a book about effective learning, co-founded EA Denmark, and did biosecurity research at Stanford. Then second, we have Paul. Um, Paul is a senior coach with over five years of hands-on experience. And in addition to his coaching role, he's currently pursuing a PhD in psychology and communication, developing the concept of behavior change literacy. Beyond academia and coaching, Paul also brings entrepreneurial expertise as the founder of, Flourishing, uh, of the F Flourishing Humanity Corporation um, that's working on two apps to, en to enable more data-driven personal development. And then third, we have Damon, um, who has worked as a family ther therapist for 10 years and currently works exclusively with the rationalists and EA communities. With that, I hand over to Sebastian uh, and hope you have a nice, great evening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being curious about uh, hopefully becoming a bit uh, better version of, of yourself. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing a bit of goodness with all of you tonight. Um, you already know a little bit about, uh, about me, and I would love to tell you a little bit more about this session. And uh, we hope that, uh, and we think that the desired outcomes of these sessions will be that you feel inspired to prioritize deliberately improving your mental health and become your best self. That you've been introduced to some effective strategies for fulfilling your potential. So this would include coaching and then also this meta thing of the psychology of interventions and then therapy. And that you've considered taking action based on one and two. So how we'll be spending our time together tonight will be, I will give a brief introduction to more of the conceptual space and then you will be uh, offered the opportunity to pursue three different tracks. And then we'll be doing, working in those tracks for around 30 minutes. And then we'll have a two to three minutes collective conclusion. And before we get started, uh, please disagree with me. You can do so by reaching out on the email or sticking around. I think yeah, we have office hours until 10. But if you, I guess if you have very strong disagreements, potentially it could be until midnight, but ho hopefully not. Um, but yeah, I've, I've often been wrong in the past, so and probably going to happen again in the future. Um, I will also introduce some, some new ideas. And I would also just say, this, all of us are interested in making this useful to you. So if, if you feel as if, hey, this doesn't resonate with me, or it seems as if this is not that relevant, actually, yeah, feel free to, feel free to, to leave. Um, I trust that you, you kind of like know how to spend, spend your time, and you shouldn't stay here just for our sake. And, um, and then fine, but if you choose to stay, I would like to ask you to create an encouraging environment so that's both in terms of being open-minded, but also in terms of being compassionate to the people who are sitting next to you, um, and, and also have a sense of you know, like confidentiality and not share things that will be discussed because some might be courageous to be a bit vulnerable. So please do uh, respect that. Are you ready? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> So I will start with a claim, and I claim that we tend to pursue careers in naive and unwise ways, and consequently we risk the following. Maximizing the wrong thing. And an extreme example that I don't think is like literally representative of every, anyone in this room, but that would be something like FTX, so kind of losing track of notion or disregarding notions such as integrity and similar things. Then I also claim that we would risk undershooting our potential by stopping prematurely. So for example, if we hold ourselves to uh, morally perfect standards and that can lead to burnout or if you're just feeling as if, hey, I just cannot keep this up, let me now just disengage from, from let's say, trying to do the most good. Um, and then, but if we, if we choose to continue to engage, we can also do so while performing suboptimally and also just inducing needless suffering um, and so WHO, but also our world and data, have estimated that around 15% of the global workforce st struggle with mental illnesses. And uh, there are some surveys that indicate that 
around 15 to 30 plus percent of the EA community and adjacent communities experience a, a mental health condition. And not that productivity is everything that matters in life, but um, there's also some uh, evidence that suggests that this would then reduce productivity by 10 to 35 percent. And this is just talking about the, the mental health conditions here. Um, and um, so that is, that is, that is kind of the, the core claim. Um, and if I were to do, uh, to illustrate this, I would say that uh, uh, this is obviously a bit contrived, but it's something like, hey, okay, we have to maximize well-being. That's like, that's the, that's the thing that matters. And actually also only my actions matter. And actually I have to maximize career and every single second of every single day, um, which can be like very tough to live with uh, yeah, moment to moment. And so there will be the presence of, of mental illness uh, and there will also be a disregard of notions such as character and virtue. And so I think we could be more awesome by, by stepping somewhat away from this and more towards something like this, where we have a more comprehensive view of what the, or notion of what the good means. And we have a strong appreciation of the importance of career as that's like likely the way that we can do the most good. And then we have some sense of you know, career excellence, which is different from perfection. It's still like trying to be like really excellent, but, it, but it's not maximizing our perfection. And that this happens uh, together with and somewhat enhanced by some sense of flourishing. For example, having a sense of purpose, um, also appreciating the importance of personal fit and maybe something like flourishing relationships. And then it's also trying to be a little bit in touch with notions like character and virtue. For example, how can I be more wise, more courageous? How can I take action with more agency? And uh, how can we go about doing that? Well, so I would love to provide you with a comprehensive uh, strategy for, for doing this. Um, and that's actually what I'm gonna do now. No, I, I actually really wish that I could do that, but uh, individual differences really do uh, really do matter and I would also say um, or not and I would say but we will hopefully be able to uh, enable you to take one step towards this um, by providing you with sufficiently high quality let's say ideas and practices amongst the, the three tracks that you can pick from in just a bit, uh, bit. and uh, We've, we've based them or picked them based on a mix of, of evidence, but also um, they also involve sustained effort, which is something because we'll never be exonerated on the path to impact. There will always be more work for us to do to be at our best and um, overcome our struggles. And it also, these things would also invo involve some sense of accountability, which is like important to, to that, let's say, sustained, uh, sustained effort. And with that, I, uh, well, as, and we could also talk a lot about some of the awesome meta-analyses out there, but I, this is a workshop and it's much more important that you guys get to, to work on, on yourself. And so I would now um, invite uh, Paul and Damon to, to come up here and uh, briefly present what's, uh, what's in store for the person or people who would pick your tracks. So, yeah, let's come up. So, yeah, Paul, uh, tell us, if we want to, the psychology of interventions. Okay, Good. now it works. <laughs> so uh, back to the meta topic of uh, in psychology of interventions, which means basically all of you have probably tried various things to improve your mental health and productivity. Um, but what I want to try here is really uh, help you in the workshop think about what worked for you and more importantly, why it worked for you, such as that you can use those insights to build a model to select future interventions and design more effective interventions, which means if you like try coaching or therapy, like you figure out what pra practitioners you resonated with, which practitioner you didn't resonate at and why, such as that you can do more deliberate uh, decisions in the future about which interventions you will pick and that might be more effective for you. So we'll um, ask those questions and you will build a small model of your uh, intervention psychology. Cool. Um, I'm going to be over there. It's going to be on the left side. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, and Damon? Hey, uh, 
I am going to talk about something that I call bug generators. So some of you may be familiar with bug lists. Bugs are like this like, concept of uh, a way of describing things in your life that you would like to change, things in yourself that you wish were different uh, to improve your experience of life or, or improve your efficiency at life or your relationships with other people or whatever. Uh, instead of just listing out your bugs and saying, you know, here are the things that I want to change about my life, uh, my concept of bug generators is like, okay, you list out your bugs and then maybe you try to figure out what common things might these bugs have, uh, what's the common cause maybe for some of these bugs, such that you're not just playing, you know, whack-a-mole at specific symptoms, which can still be useful sometimes, specifically if there's like a particular symptom that you think is valuable to get rid of uh, as a priority, but you can also see like, okay, what is the common problem that's causing a handful of these symptoms maybe, uh, and then like how to deal with those deeper uh, issues. Uh, and yeah, you're gonna be basically just going over your own uh, concept of your bug list and then trying to, uh, I'll go over my taxonomy of what kinds of bugs there are out there that you can uh, kind of search through your bug list for and find generators for, and if we have some time extra, uh, even like some strategies for how to deal with those bug generators. And I'll be over there. Cool, here we can just put it here.